Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So here it is guys, another model, the Bitcoin Logarithmic Fractal Growth Model. Okay, and this is on the monthly, brought to us by Washi Groria. According to this indicator, we are currently in an accumulation zone. And so, you know, this also supports the theories that uh, we've been discussing on this channel. The fact that, you know, this is just crypto accumulation and not necessarily the end of days. Uh, so you can see the model here, right? Accumulation zone uh, down here. He's uh, labeling accumulation zone by long opportunities, uh, occasional drop zone, rare buy opportunities. So there are different regions in the zones that he highlights. Uh, and you can see we are now in one of those highlighted areas and to avoid liquidation zones, sell short opportunities and uh, danger zones, avoid buy long opportunities. Those have been historically found uh, at the top of the trend. So you guys can see we were back over there at the top back uh, last spring and we even touched that zone uh, back in November. But now we're down here. According to this indicator, we are currently in an accumulation zone. Historically, Bitcoin price has always been supported by the green line. There has been no case of a monthly candle body entirely closing below it. So that's something else uh, we should note. Again, this is on the monthly and uh, monthly candlesticks. It's uh, getting close to the end of the month here. Uh, and what he's saying is that uh, historically, the monthly candlestick has never actually closed below that level. You can see even on the monthly right now, we are holding that support level, uh, closing above that level that we dipped down to, kind of got our toes wet in back in June of 2021. Haven't gone below that, at least not yet, fingers crossed. So uh, another interesting model here. I'll link this in the description if you guys want uh, a copy of this or uh, maybe if you just want to follow Washi Gorira, check out some of his tweets, uh, some interesting stuff there. Proof of Steve also uh, mentioning this. All the signs are there. All the signals are flashing. These are long-term charts, so it doesn't have to happen today, but it is getting closer day by day. And when sentiment shifts, things will move quickly out of the gates. Retweeting out T Analyst's uh, tweet here, just demonstrating again, the NASDAQ 100 breadth is near previous market bottoms, uh, except for the 2008 bottom. So uh, based on what the NASDAQ has done in the past, we have actually seen Bitcoin price pop accordingly. So an interesting counter indicator here, uh, getting down to the bottom, the NASDAQ obviously hitting lows, as you guys can see, superimpose the Bitcoin chart here. That's the that's the one in color here. And the one underneath is the NASDAQ finding its floor, the, uh, the, the NASDAQ 100 index, percent of members above 200 day moving average. So that's that particular indicator. Uh, all things pointing to accumulation season. Um, you know, we still could go a little lower, accumulate down and around here for Bitcoin. I'm thinking the summer is going to be fairly dull, guys. I'm not going to lie to you um, because this is kind of the absolute bottom. We touched down there, tested that level. Now we're hovering in and around here, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did uh, go back down, hopefully hold this level here, accumulate into the fall, and then blast off, not just for Bitcoin, but for all other altcoins. We're getting this positive sentiment too in the market, guys. This is from Michael at Val5Links. For example, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz says he's extremely bullish on Bitcoin and uh, he has, for example, weekly buy orders where he buys Bitcoin no matter what the price is every single week. Ted Cruz discussed Bitcoin at the Heritage Foundation's Bitcoin and the American Experiment event on Monday. He began by saying, I gotta say when it comes to Bitcoin, when it comes to crypto more generally, I am incredibly bullish. I think it is in the process of and in the future, even more so, it will change the world, he opined. Um, he proceeded to talk about various reasons why people are attracted to Bitcoin, First, many are using it as a hedge against inflation. And I talked a little bit about uh, using cryptocurrency as a hedge against inflation in a video I did the other week. It wasn't that popular, but I talked about some concepts there that I think, you know, if you hold enough cryptocurrency and if you bought long enough ago, you could actually utilize, I mean, depending on where you live and depending on who's accepting crypto as a payment, you can actually use it to hedge against inflation. I'll, um, I'll link that video up here in the top right hand corner if you guys are interested. Secondly, though, he explained, there's also also an appeal of speed, the ability to instantly carry out financial transactions anywhere in the world instantaneously and virtually costless. So that's an interesting comment considering uh, that is not Bitcoin. That sounds more like XRP or uh, cryptocurrencies or rather uh, blockchain technologies that are similar to uh, the XRP ledger. He continued by saying, and then there is the advantage of freedom. There is nobody in charge. That terrifies government decision makers. Referencing uh, that communist China and US Senator Elizabeth Warren want to control currencies. Cruz commented, uncontrolled decentralized currency is terrifying for those who want control. 
of currency. So it sounds as though these politicians, at least um, maybe paying us lip service, but it sounds as though they're on our side when it comes to freedom, you know, the, the ability to hold crypto and to have autonomy over your financial future. So there's that. There is also this I noticed from JP Morgan, this from XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. JP Morgan says cryptocurrency has overtaken real estate as one of its preferred alternative assets. So this is also interesting. JP Morgan believes that Bitcoin's fair value is 28% higher than its current worth. So they're estimating it somewhere in the $30,000 range. The bank also said uh, it is one of its preferred asset classes. After the cryptocurrency market witnessed a dramatic sell-off and a not-so-good week, the bank believes there will be a significant upside. The bank also added that cryptocurrency has overtaken real estate as one of its preferred asset classes. JP Morgan thinks that $38,000 stands as a fair Bitcoin price today. It currently trades at about 29800 which is way below uh, what the bank anticipates the value to be. Uh, the past month's crypto market correction looks more like capitulation relative to last January, February, and going forward, we will see an upside for Bitcoin and crypto markets in general. This is coming from uh, Nicholas Panigitsaroglu, the bank strategist over there at, uh, at JP Morgan. So even JP Morgan is saying, you know, crypto is becoming more popular than alternative asset classes like real estate. Really? Are you serious? They're the ones that said it, not me. So that's an interesting uh, comment coming from JP Morgan. You know, they have a reputation. They are not just going to say anything willy nilly, make that public. So, you know, to say that, I think that holds incredible weight. No matter what cryptocurrency you're looking to get in, guys, this is an opportunity to buy. This is an opportunity to accumulate more. For example, XRP right now trading under 40 cents at about 38.7, 0.387. So, you know, again, great opportunity to maybe accumulate on some of those cryptocurrencies that uh, maybe you felt like you didn't buy enough of. Um, you know, of course, if you have some extra cash laying on the side, don't overextend yourselves, guys, though. The last thing you want to do is invest more than you can afford to lose because we never know really nobody's got a crystal ball we don't know when the market is really going to rebound so if you're banking on um you know rent money having <laughs> rent money don't do that this is not financial advice i'm just letting you know you know there are opportunities this is what i'm planning on doing i'm actually waiting for it to go lower to be honest i think um you know this trend for example for xrp i got the xrp chart up here um but ultimately they're, they're all looking the same at this moment we saw that initial move down we saw a bit of a rebound um, I don't think we're going to do this. I think we're going to do more something like this over the next little while before we start to come out of it. So I'm looking for prices down and around here. Again, my estimate this summer, it's just around the corner. Um, we also got this guy's a new update in the Ripple SEC case uh, posted by James K. Filan. Let me just read that first and then I'll get to Bill's tweet. So the court has granted the SEC's motion for extension of time to file an opposition to Amakai's request to participate in the expert challenge. SEC's objection is due by June the 7th, as we know, and any responses to that objection are due June the 10th. So Bill uh, retweeted this out. Thank you, James. This is great news. Many thanks to the SEC for drawing attention to Amakai's pre-motion letter for the sake of a seven-day extension and letting the judge know. It is so concerned and oppositional to Amakai's participation in a challenge to Mr. Duty's expert report. So going back to the duty report, the judge now knows that John Deaton represents 67,300 XRP holders and 3,252 have signed affidavits on oath uh, that may be relevant to duty's report. She knows the SEC has seen them uh, in that context, it's hard for her to already infer why the SEC opposes Amakai's participation. So for those of you guys who maybe need to get up to speed, Duty's report, Duty, Patrick Duty, was hired by the SEC to prove that people were buying XRP investors, retail like you and I, were buying XRP um, based on Ripple's efforts and uh, solely looking at what Ripple was doing in order to boost the value of our bags. Well, this clearly is not true. If you've been in the XRP community, you know, you know, Ripple is just one part of this, but uh, there are so many other facets. XRP is an independent cryptocurrency. Many projects are being built on the XRPL. It is a utility coin. It's already being used by uh, other companies and not solely based on Ripple's efforts. So uh, John Deaton just uh, updating this saying, actually, it's 67,550 as of today, 220 added since yesterday's or rather, sorry, since Saturday's filing. So that's the updated number. 
And so with regards to Patrick Duty, there's a lot of questions being asked about his credibility, his underlying motivations, and should he be even considered an expert witness? Could his testimony be challenged based on what we're starting to find? So here we go. Francisco down here actually brought this up and he uh, responded to an older tweet that Tag posted back in December. Um, and Tag's tweet was uh, just connecting the Hinman speech or connecting Hinman uh, to some organization. So let me just read this. Latham and Watkins law firm also viewed Hinman's speech as views of the SEC and not just William Hinman's opinion. So you can read the whole thing here. Um, so here's just a screen grab, but he also links uh, he also links a, a document in here uh, from June of 2018 in and around the time of the speech in question. Francisco, though, just recently posted this. The witness for the SEC against Ripple, Patrick Duty, has a company called Lilypad Capital. His business partner also worked for Lantham and Watkins. Lantham and Watkins are on the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and partnered with Consensus. So we're also seeing uh, connections there with uh, Patrick Duty now, his Lilypad Capital company, and uh, that connection with Lantham Watkins, something that uh, Tag XRP brought up way back in December, the conflict of interest there with the William Hinman uh, speech. So, you know, just uh, kind of along those lines, we've got William Hinman here sitting on a, a Zoom panel, and uh, the original uh, the, the original video was this, DAO Symposium Fireside Chat on DAOs and Regulation. Uh, this was from a couple of weeks ago, but listen to how William Hinman talks about policy related to crypto. Listen to this. My name is Bill Hinman. Uh, I had practiced law in Silicon Valley for many years, um, and always in the private sector, and then in 2017, joined the SEC as the director of corporation finance. Um, there, I um, was fortunate enough to be able to make some policy related to uh, crypto. We launched a framework in, um, someone's phone is ringing, it's not mine, I'm sorry. Um, we, we launched a, a framework for how you analyze when is a, um, complex instrument uh, like a digital token uh, security and um, did a few other things that we'll talk about later. We launched a framework, yeah, Nerd Nation Unboxed, who brought us this tweet. Uh, he's noticing that there's a we again, talking about we, us at the SEC, not just um, William Hinman's personal opinion. Um, you know, this wouldn't matter so much if the personal opinion portion of uh, this law of this uh, speech in question wasn't so important to the Ripple SEC lawsuit uh, that the XRP community has been examining over the last several months. I was able to make some policy related to crypto as the quote goes, we launched a framework. So William Hinman here uh, saying, you know, this was a uh, collaborative effort. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just my personal opinion stating what I thought about cryptocurrencies. We launched a framework, meaning us at the SEC. So thanks so much to Nerd Nation Unbox for posting that. And uh, if you guys want to watch that uh, full symposium chat, it is here. It is 42 minutes long. Uh, I'll also link the uh, the YouTube link in the description for you guys. And continuing on the theme of uh, scrutinizing Mr. Patrick Duty, uh, Leonidas here posted this. I wonder in which digital assets this independent expert, in quotes, witness is invested in. So this is Pat Duty's. Uh, it looks like his uh, resume, key qualifications and experiences. One of the things that uh, Leonidas discovers here is three years of experience investing in digital assets on spot and futures markets. So at that time, he had three years experience investing in digital assets. So Leonidas asking a very, very poignant question. Was he invested in Ethereum? And if so, could that be a conflict of interest? I have a feeling he probably was. Um, I mean, I'm just completely speculating on that, but that's my feeling. Uh, Ripple Eye down here also uh, mentioning this, which I find kind of interesting that he um, he also, okay, so SEC, so he's an expert witness, Patrick Duty owns Integra FEC, who got awarded $625 by the IRS along with Chainalysis in 2020. And guess what these guys were tasked with doing? They were uh, support professional intelligence to track Monero transactions and Lightning transactions or Lightning tracing. 
So it looks as though they were already being contracted by the IRS. So deep ties in government and specifically to thwart um, money laundering, I guess, uh, with Monero and Lightning tracing. Uh, that's at least what, uh, what it looks like from the surface. Uh, again, I will link this in the description if you guys want to read further. And Coining203, boy, we got a lot of great stuff today. Coining203 also pointed this out. Please look into duties contracts, period of performances, and what the nature of the work is. For my last 10 years of working in government contracts, I can shed some info on this. And so he says, the POP or the period of performance may have already lapsed. Uh, here's a few links for people to look at. So um, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but uh, again, I will link this in the description if you guys are interested in uh, reading further. I just want to highlight some of the key points. Also, here is every single contract awarded from the SEC to Integra, which we now know was Duty's company, FEC. Uh, and again, a link to that. From a quick search, the period of performance, or the POP, seems to have been from 2017 to 2021. The contract was for four years, and it may not even be working at the SEC at this point. Uh, FAR clauses and strict procedures have to be followed when performing a contract. Well, on contract, for example, you can't even take anyone from the government to a meal. All discussions have to be recorded and meeting minutes produced. You always have uh, DCMA and FAR regulations and clauses to follow. I am 100% about this and no one wants Ripple to win more than me. Also, the nature of the work had nothing to do with crypto or XRP. So he's pointing out some uh, some other facts here that um, that might actually save face for Pat Duty. So we got to look at both sides of this, of course, to be fair. Uh, also, the nature of the work okay, had nothing to do with crypto or XRP. It's uh, It was for helping the SEC with credit rating establishments for a variety of financial instruments by way of disclosures. Nothing to do with crypto. Look up the contracts. It'll help. Uh, and then here's an awarded uh, contract link, uh, linking again to a government website and just a screen grab here, uh, just demonstrating the awarded contract to Patrick Duty's company. Interesting news there. And uh, thanks so much to Coining203 for bringing that up. A lot of people in the XRP community, you know, shifting gears, finding more information now, more dirt on Patrick Duty. And, uh, you know, I think it is our duty. I think the XRP community's duty to do this. Any help, I think, to support Ripple's case would uh, definitely bode well for, uh, for, for the outcome of the lawsuit. So what else do we know? Well, Eleanor Turret from Fox Business, a producer over there at Fox, said, here's the scoop. Patrick Duty, the independent expert at the SEC, retained to analyze the perspective of a reasonable purchaser of XRP, is right now currently employed by a private consulting firm that, get this guys, won a $4.1 million government contract in 2018. And guess who the contract was funded by? You got it. The SEC. Jeremy Hogan even uh, took it one step further and decided to fact check this definitive contract. And here's the number is a time and materials federal contract award. It was awarded to Integra FEC, again, Patrick Duty's company, LLC on, on uh, April 9th, 2018. The definitive contract is funded by the Security and Exchange Commission. The potential value of the award, $4.1 million or rather $4,120,927 to be exact. The NAICS category for this award is, uh, and then it gives another code number, other scientific and technical consulting services. The PSE category is this number, uh, support professional program management support. So here is the official uh, documentation uh, stating that Integra did in fact get that $4.1 million contract. So a conflict of interest? I certainly now think so. Cali Brit X here saying, I'm assuming this blows his testimony completely out of the water, uh, considering, you know, he was supposed to be their expert witness stating that anybody who was buying XRP at said date, all these retail investors were under the impression that Ripple, whatever Ripple did, the contributions of Ripple would raise the price of XRP based solely on Ripple's actions. And so Jeremy Hogan responding saying it does absolutely destroy his credibility, especially if it turns out that the $4.1 million is a large percentage of the company's gross income. The court of crypto Twitter is getting so real at this moment. I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting excited. Chloe XRP here saying, will the judges be made aware of this beforehand, Jeremy? I know that crypto Twitter and what actually comes in the courtroom are two separate issues. Unfortunately, otherwise the case would be over. 
already? Well, I guess it all depends on who is going to bring what information to court and if uh, Ripple's lawyers are going to contest Patrick Duty's statements, if they're going to contest his ability to perform his task reliably based on these conflicts of interest. So do you think Ripple's lawyers are going to bring this new found information to the judge? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.